Hello, my name is Troy Shiro, President and CEO of Pure Gold Mining. Pure Gold Mining operates one of the newest high-grade gold mines in North America. The mine is located in one of the richest mining districts in the world, Red Lake. In a span of six years, the company has brought a brownfield exploration project to production during a worldwide pandemic, no less. There were a lot of lessons learned last year. Despite the slow ramp up, many of the components of the mine were validated. The value of the proposition for the investor is that the project is less risky today than it was a year ago. And our share price is trading at 30% of the share price a year ago. 2022 will be a year in which we complete ramp up and we begin to generate cash flow. As we mine deeper in the deposit, the grades increase, which will increase annual production and decrease costs. We will continue to advance toward the eight zone, which has a reserve grade of 16 gram per ton, and it remains open and underexplored. Like many other mines in Red Lake, they have lives that last for decades. We at Pure Gold think that the Pure Gold mine has a multi-generational aspect to it as well. And that's just the start. Okay. Troy, we've not met before. Appreciate you coming on the, on the show and talking to us. We, we'd, we'd spoken with um, Darren uh, a few times previously on, on and off. Uh, last year was a year to forget, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Definitely. Well, last year we didn't execute. We didn't execute on our 2021 mine plan predominantly. Uh, there were reasons for that. Uh, there was a definition drilling program that was just clearly inadequate. It wasn't providing the data necessary for us to provide a steady stream of high grade, high confidence scope material into the mine plan so that the mill could be fed its nameplate capacity of 800 ton per day. But so it's, as a result, so so so, so, so talk to me about that because um, it, it's kind of like it feel it kind of feels like the simple stuff wasn't happening, right? You, you That's you're correct. a billion as a billion dollar company, uh, high grade, everyone's excited, the right part of the world, right country, jurisdiction, um, and it's like. People's just switched off. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, you know, normally under startup, because I have a history of startups in my background, normally you're looking for those big items that create challenges at startup. You're looking at, you know, is the block model performing? Do you have dilution that's uncontrollable? Is your meal operating correctly? Are your recoveries there? That's Those are some of the things that you normally look for when you see a startup being challenged. What we found in September of last year, when the technical committee was able to get on site, we found that the definition drilling program was not adequate. We were not providing the data that we needed to make good decisions. And that's why we last year's production, uh, the grade that came through the mill was heavily diluted by low grade development ore that was being put through the mill because the mill was hungry, right? The mine decided to go for tons as opposed to tons and grades. And that's why we saw that poor performance last year. Okay, I, I do want to come on to that, and, I, and I, we will come on to that. Okay, but um, let, let me start with you because the first time I've, I've spoke to you, right? Um, I'd like to know a little bit about you. What, what, what's your background, and you know what gives you permission to be able to walk into a situation like this to say, "Don't, don't worry, guys. We saw what happened last year, but we got this. We can fix this." So, what's the track record? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I'm a mine engineer by training. I began my career in 1983 as a contract miner underground at the home state gold mine in Leeds, South Dakota, while I was attending the university to get my degree. Shortly thereafter, I went into underground coal for a very brief period of time and realized that really wasn't where I needed to be. I went back to hard rock where I stayed in precious metals the rest of my career. So I worked my way up from junior engineer to senior engineer, chief engineer, technical services superintendent, mine superintendent, general manager. And then later I moved into the executive ranks as VP of technical services, VP of ops, COO and CEO. And more recently, I've been sitting on a board of a number of junior mining companies. But part of my history has always been in startups. I've been a number on part of a number of startup teams. 
And also, as I became an executive, I was responsible for the development, construction, and operation of various uh, mines in South America and North America. Right. Okay. But I mean, in, so you, you know how to run things. Have you ever had to walk into a situation like this? It's, I, don't, I don't think this is a turnaround per se. It's an execution issue, right? It's like we need to plan better. We need more rigor and process to uh, what we've got here because the potential on the ground is good. It's just the execution was poor. Yeah. You know, it's having been there before. I think that's very important. Being able to motivate people and provide the right leadership and accountability that they need initially at startup, because we oftentimes talk about experience and operations. And there's plenty of people out there that have 20 and 30 years of experience in the industry. But startup experience is different. It's more intense. And that's your opportunity to establish the culture that you want there and the culture of safe, efficient production. Oftentimes, people don't have those leadership skills to do that. And unfortunately, that's what we found at site here was that, yes, we had people with 20 and 30 years experience, but their leadership skills and their attention to detail and accountability just didn't produce the culture that we wanted. Is, is it as simple as that? Is it as simple as um, culture? I mean, I'm a strong believer in that. I, I, I you know, I'd, li I'd like to think that's true. So, I mean, you brought a couple of people in, uh, Maurice, uh Belanger. Belanger. Yeah, Belanger. Okay. I uh, like for instance, she. What what in fact, what was the board's brief to you and to her, or what was your brief to her in terms of what she needed to do? Because obviously, you you had a look at this back in September. You spotted a few things, and I, I noticed in, in in various communication that you you've got some initiatives uh, under underway. But in, in prior to the order, what was important to you? Well, I, Maurice and I both have very similar background. In fact, it's. 35 years plus in, in operations with a lot of that in startup and, and Maurice as a turnaround specialist as well. And when we got on site and we both identified the issues very quickly, we came up with an action item before we even left the mine site that day, that these were some of the things that we needed to do. And it was more than just the definition drilling program that was inadequate as we're talking about right now. It was leadership, right? Just general leadership and accountability and fundamentally understanding what is necessary to motivate people to use best practices all of the time. You know, you have to do that immediately up front because if you don't, it's hard to change culture. And right now we are changing culture because Maurice and I both have the background in doing that. And it's it's paying dividends. We're seeing that with uh, what we're seeing in December production. And why I've seen this before with a with another company, a Canadian company, but with an Australian asset, where they were presenting numbers on a monthly basis, as opposed to I guess well established industry standard or quarterly. Is that because things are so wrong that you need to show there is regular improvement? Yes, you know I. What we've learned last year as well, because we learned many things last year, is that we need to be very careful on our projections and how we present that to the market. I think as an engineer, I'm results oriented, right? So I believe you're rewarded for your results. That's why I think that once we reach Q1 and re report Q1, we're going to see a big difference. You're going to see a significant change in how things are improving over that quarter. This quarter, because well, this quarter is what seven point four, seven point six. Can't quite remember. Um, it, 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 all, all the answers are important at, at that level, but you you've got to you've got to step things up significantly. So what 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 are you? Because I because there's a lot of numbers that are presented. There's a lot of numbers missing. Like ASIC is is I, mm -hmm. I can't find that mm -hmm. anywhere mm -hmm. anywhere right. <laughs> uh, so. Maybe right now is not where you want to be talking about that. You want to get that. You want to get. You want to get the machine working, right? You want to get the system working uh, before and give yourself a fair fair chance at. But would we be expecting to sort of see some of the cost numbers in the first quarter? I think we'll probably get to that point. I think you know it's important to remember that some of the initiatives that we started, the definition drilling program, we've also have huge improvements going on with our mechanical availability underground because part of the low production profile in October was related to just low equipment availability. We just didn't have the uh, preventive maintenance program in place, even though we had purchased a computerized maintenance 
program for them to use and train them, the mine didn't embrace it. It was embraced in the mill. It was embraced on site infrastructure, but the mine did not. So equipment availability dropped. And so those two items, the definition drilling and rebuilding the fleet, so to speak, they're going to take a little time. And we're doing that right now. The definition drilling program, actually the intent of that program is not only to get us caught up, but to give us an inventory of about three to six months of high confidence scopes that we can put into the mine plan so we have flexibility going forward. Right. How long have you been on the board? Uh, since 2014. Since 2014. So w- if, if I may ask then, why did it take you and the rest of the board members so long to kind of spot where where this was heading? Was it was it was the information the very- obfuscated from you? Were you not paying attention? Uh, and like September, you stepped in and said, no, enough's enough here. Was that driven by share price only? I mean, what, That's a very good question. And unfortunately, there, there's two parts of that. Number one, uh, the pandemic, right? Travel restrictions. Under normal circumstances, I would have been at the mine site one week per month during construction and one week per month during ramp up. That wasn't possible. I was... Prior to the pandemic, I was on site in March of 2020, uh, and then we weren't able to get back on site until September of 2021, almost 18 months later. So that was part of the issue. We couldn't get on site. And the information that we were receiving had no indication that any of these issues were going on. And a lot of of those you can't see until you get on the ground. Um, So we didn't know when we first got on site. In fact, we were looking for some of the more traditional startup issues, you know, the modeling, was the modeling, was there a bust in the model? Was there uh, increased dilution in the mine? Was there something else that we traditionally look for and we didn't find that? Those all checked out, okay. What we did find was that we didn't have a definition drilling program that we needed in order to support uh, 800 tons per day to the mill. Take this the right way, because I think I think the market wants to know. What was the case of Darren and Sean took one for the team here, or was the case of the the blame laid fair and square at their door for this? Uh, you know, Darren and uh, and um, Sean both did a fantastic job. I mean, I know both of them very well. I I consider them very good friends. Um, they brought the asset up to the point of production. Everything went very well. We were on budget, on schedule, first pour as planned. What we're looking for now because of what we found on site in September, the lack of leadership, the lack of operational knowledge of startup, that we needed that horsepower now because we had already gone so long missing targets and promising the market one thing and not delivering, right? And so we wanted to make sure we put our best foot forward. Maurice raised her hand and said, hey, I'm willing to go in and take over the mine site. How often do you see a, a director jump into the MG Emerald, not very often. You know, times, sometimes, yeah. some, sometimes you'll see uh, a director step into the CEO president role, uh, which I took over. So what we did was we wanted to make sure that we had all of that operational and startup horsepower available to the mine site, and that's why we had that transition. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll leave I'll leave that there because uh, you know they're they're no longer here to answer for themselves. No. If, if I can talk about um, the plan that you, Maurice, and are presumably agreed by the board, uh, Marco Day, etc., have have agreed to. There's a, there's a number of initiatives um, that you kind of you publicly state. I mean, some of these things have happened in in, in Q4, uh, and you may start to start see those trickle through and start affecting you know Q1, Q2 numbers this year. Um, what should we expect to see in Q1? You indicated a little bit about what, what we should expect. Yeah, to see, what's it going to look? The like? guidance that the guidance that we're providing for Q1 is that we'll reach nameplate capacity of 800 tons per day, and uh, then but, the but, goal. But, but again, like, what does that mean? Because that's that's the tonnage issue that you spoke about earlier. What does it mean in terms of the grade and in terms of answers? <laughs> well, well, yeah, we expect the grade to be five to seven gram, uh, reaching nameplate capacity of 800 tons per day. Q2, we're going to see um, an increase, or we should be reaching our cash flow neutral and then start generating cash in Q2. And then beyond that, we want to be at 1,000 tons per day by year end. So that's well at over and above what we had in the original life of mine plan. So. Um, you know, I think we're going to see improvements all year long. 
And uh, I think it's one, worth noting that as the deposit gets deeper, uh, you know, the grades go up. So the initial life of mine plan in the original 2021 mine plan, the grades were not all that spectacular, right? I mean, that was always going to be a low grade year anyway, low, uh, low ounce production year anyway. And year two is a little better than that. But beyond that, that's when you start getting into the higher grades and the approaching the 100,000 ounces per year plus. Right. And so I'm going to ask the same question again, only because I'm not sure I heard, I'm not sure I heard it right or wasn't listening properly, which was, uh, so it's going to be quarterly reporting, not monthly going forward, right? So we said? For right now, yes. Yep. Got it. For right now. Okay. Yep. Makes, yep. makes a lot yep. of sense. Yep. Um, cool. Um, now, because I want to, because there's some things I want to talk about, I need to understand the money, right? So a lot of money has gone into this. A lot of money's uh, gone in from Eric Sprott. A lot of money's gone in for our, the, the Sprott organization or organizations in, in ver- various forms. Um, and yet, so what was the total dollar number that's been raised to date? Oh, geez, the total number? No, I do know the the debt facility 85 but yeah um you know we've had a we've had various financings over the last couple of years I, okay well let me put it another I, way I, I, so I maybe, really know. maybe an unfair one it, it's, it's a big number right but i, I just yeah. wonder because people got excited about the potential of this and certainly you know i, I remember early early day conversations with with darren um you know this this is the next you know fill in blank name uh of, of mine um do you think do you think the business was just a little bit Kind of casual the way it deployed capital. You know, do things need to tighten up, and will they tighten up under this new regime that you're, you're implementing? Well, I think you know, anytime you go through startup construction and startup, I should say, sometimes cash goes out the door in areas that you didn't necessarily want to. Um, I wouldn't say it was excessive by any means. I think you know the prudent thing is after construction is to ensure that the site personnel understand that. Just because we had capital available doesn't mean that we're going to spend capital freely going forward, right? There has to be justification for every expense once you start production. And uh, so there may have been some of that going on. I think it's worth noting, though, that some of the raises that we had in the past were related to flow through financing, right? And so those flow through funds are limited to what they can be used for. And for one example, we had a $17 million flow through financing for the development of the ramp going down to the eight zone. And that was one of the commitments we had to do uh, with those funds. So, you know, some of that up uh, capital was not available for operation. Right. So, I mean, again, around the time that you kind of stepped up to the plate, uh, you did a, you did a board deal, ended up 23 million bucks. You also did another 3.5 with uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti. Um, you, you know, was was that planned, or was that the case of we've seen enough here? We need money to actually fix this thing and get it back. No, no, I, I, yeah, that wasn't planned. And, and uh, you know, had we known what we know now, those funds would have been used for definition drilling, right? We would have brought the drill the drills in immediately and started using those funds to expand the stope inventory underground. But that didn't happen, unfortunately. It was used more for the cash burn that we were seeing on the on every month because the revenues were not catching up right with the cost so so uh, yeah no that wasn't planned um and you know it's it's unfortunate and i understand the frustration of the shareholders there's no question about that as an engineer as i told you earlier uh, i'm results oriented i believe you should be rewarded when you Hit your numbers, and when you don't, you're going to be punished. Yeah, and and, and I think the share price is obviously seen that. You know, thirty thirty percent from its heights, um, it's definitely seen that. But it, I guess therein lies the opportunity if you can get this right, right? Uh, so it's just sticking with the finance side of things, obviously you've got the the, the f- facility available to you. Do you think you're going mm-hmm. to need to um, bump that up some, or are you, is that are you good for now on that? And when will it be? Well, you know, down? right now with with the plan that we have in place. Uh, of course, we monitor our cash position very carefully and we want to monitor it very closely. Um, with our plan in place, we just want to make sure that we don't get ourselves into a position where, you know, we, all, all of a sudden we need cash, right? Uh, so we monitor it very closely. Uh, outside of that, we're prudent with sticking with our plan. We believe in the plan. We know that we're going to get where we want to go. Uh, so I think there's a lot of good things that's going to happen in the next two quarters. Right. Okay. And, and, and we shall see, and you shall deliver it and you shall communicate to the marketplace. But um, like for instance, having had that credit facility in place, 
you mm-hmm. instead went out and did a dilution. You, you took equity instead. Is that because the conditions attached to the credit facility and the fact that you hadn't hit the deadlines in terms of production? Yeah, I think it was just that the the opportunity was there for the financing, and and uh, you know we'd already had uh, had uh, Sprott uh, Resource Lending in for the the eighty five million dollar credit facility. No, so, but, but were they stopping you, know, you from from drawing no. down on that one because you haven't got the revenues to pay it back, pay back any coupon on it, or, or, or could you, was that an option for you? No, that 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 really wasn't an option at that point. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, fine. Yeah, Under, understood. Um, so that was back in uh, September, October. Um, again, you, you're going to be producing revenue, presumably, well, probably in, in, into Q2 once once it's mm-hmm. max. Um, but it's not going to be enough to kind of, well, I don't know what what the expectations are, and you probably can't say forward forward looking what your, your expectations are there. But it's not going to, it's not going to cover much other than kind of running costs. So what's what's it going to? What do you feel the ramp up needs to look like? You know, if you're hitting nameplate, then it kind of gives us a bit of a clue. But what do you need it to be? Well, I think at nameplate, I think we're we're going to be generating cash flow. Are we going to be generating a significant amount of cash flow that we can fund expiration programs and the such that we want to do as far as growth? Uh, probably not. Not this year. Uh, next year, potentially, yes. I mean, grades increase next year. If we when we sustain a thousand tons per day, that's a significant number in comparison to, you know, it's a 25% increase in tons through the mill. So that's going to provide additional funding and cash flow into the company that we can start these growth projects because it's a phased approach that we have here, right? Phase one was feasibility production. Phase two was optimization. And phase three is growing the resource, not only organically with what we have in the current footprint, but also outside of the footprint. And we've already released some of those numbers with some of those satellite deposits that we have out there. It's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of interesting, actually, because, you know, the, okay, the previous CEO and therefore the board, you know, sanctioned being, making statements about the timing of when, you know, you'd be in production, when revenues would start flowing through, et cetera. So the market had a, an a, expectation. Mm-hmm. In fact, it possibly even got ahead of itself Um you know, I think was the you know in in, in twenty twenty, right? Um, I think it'd be fair to say, but you you've got to be quite careful uh, now about setting those expectations or resetting those expectations because there is a kind of ramp up period. You don't just get into production and hit the hit the you know top line number day one. There's a ramp up period. You're going to have to play kind That's of catch right. up on the on the uh, cash. Uh, well, the, the the cash expenditures, and then eventually get to a point where there's a growth component to this, right? Because mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. that's 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 the that's blue fair. sky, right? That's the that's the big, that's right, right? So you, you you're quite conscious of that. So you know, it's it's one thing saying we'll get into production, but please listen to the, the, the on the basis on which we're going to get into production. There will be a ramp up, guys. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. This is just the start, right? This is just the start. That's all, that's that was the plan all along. You know, we stumbled coming out of the gate, and we're getting us back on track. And so this is just the start. We see a lot of upside to the future. We've got a tremendous uh, exploration potential, the eight zone, which has really not been drilled out. And that is an anomaly, uh, something similar to what they saw at the high grade zone over at uh, the Red Lake Mall. You know, it's in the same rocks, it's at the same depth. And so there's potential for that to grow as well. But uh, we want to take this asset as this is going to be the starter mine. We're going to grow from here. We're going to expand not only the resources, but also the throughput through the mill. We're already looking at ways that we can bring these satellite deposits in with a minor mill expansion so that are we just a 100,000 ounce, ounce producer? No, we're moving up 125, 150,000 ounce per production, right? We're, we're not going to be content sitting on just one life of mine plan. Right. Okay. And, and, and sorry, and again, I'll, I'll come 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 back to that. I just want to kind of stick with the, the corporate structure component of this. So, are you okay. are you going to do um, anything like a, a rollback, just to kind of, kind of again part of this kind of reset? Because you're in a period now. You're kind of a, you're in a kind of a period of grace, right? Because mm-hmm. it's it's a, it's a reset, right? So, are mm-hmm. you going to take advantage of that and do things like? a rollback or um, some kind of restructuring of, of the finance? You know, there'll be a point in time for the uh, for the refinance of the credit facility. Um, and that, that'll likely follow after we reach uh, cash flow, 
right? Um, as far as the rollback on the shares, you know, that's really nothing that we have talked about at the board level yet. It's been brought up in conversation a couple of times, but we haven't uh, formally discussed it anymore. Right. And has the, and has the board discussed? Because it, like I say, last year is a bit, a bit of a train wreck. No, no, no one wants to mm-hmm. look back at last year and, uh, and probably don't with any, any, any pleasure. But is there anything for shareholders who have been kind of crushed? Especially the ones that hold and decide, you know, thinking, well, hoping that you guys will turn the bus around and and get this working. Is there anything from the board saying, I tell you what, we're going to defer options, warrants, salaries, payments, any kind of financial, you know, um, punitive action on themselves to say, like, apologize, we had we took our eye off the ball here, but. We're back on it now, but here's what we're going to do as, as a, some kind of penance. Yeah, well, you know, what we have done in the past, and I'm not going to say what we're planning on doing for the future, but in the past, we have deferred uh, payments to the board. We have uh, taken salary reductions at the management level in the company. Um, we have taken steps not to issue options or RSUs or DSUs. We've done those sort of things, and it's probably likely that won't happen. That, that'll happen again this year. That, right? w- that will we, happen we this be- year. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, we're just not in a position at this point in time to reward ourselves, right? That's not that's not in the cards. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, right. So, so let's let's talk, let's talk about the the, the focus because there's a, there's a few targets here. It's a it's a big you know land package you've got. It's deep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, pro- it will ke- keep on giving. You, you gave us a clue there as to what you're trying to do. This isn't like you've got one um, life of mine plan. There's got to be more to it, and I, you've probably got your eye on, on, on a prize there. So what, what can we expect to see from the from the, gro- the growth comp- side of the, um, this story as you start to tell it this year? Well, I think the first thing that we'll target is the eight zone uh, because that's an obvious target where before we drilled it from the surface, which was very long holes over a thousand meters long. Now we're down 500 meters. So we're about halfway there. So it's much easier to drill areas in the eight zone. So we look forward to doing that once we have cash flow. Obviously that's, that's a limiting factor right now because we, in all honesty, we'd be drilling it today if we had the funds in the, in the bank <clears throat> because the growth on that, zone uh, because of the grade uh, and because it's open, uh, it's, it's going to even change the life of my plane plan in itself, right? So there's a lot of opportunity there. We also have a depth. If you look at our neighbors to the north in evolution and how deep the, those Red Lake mines are, they're very deep. They're a, a, another thousand meters deep, right? So we have a lot of uh, potential just with extending to depth and we do have intercepts down there that show the mineralization is a depth we just haven't drilled them from service they're just too deep, deep and too expensive yeah for, 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 for now that, that's that's later down the line yeah. you, you got to focus yeah. um the money on the cheaper answers for now because you gotta i think you gotta you gotta talk to the market again and regain their trust right so i think i think that's a big, a big part of rebuilding credi- exactly rebuilding credibility is a big part of what we want to do this year yeah right that's so important to us because we feel for the frustration that our shareholders have and, and because of our performance last year. Um, did it need to happen? No. I mean, there were reasons why it happened, but uh, no, it didn't need to happen. And we're going to correct that. We're going to correct that going forward. Okay. So can you, can you just, in, in terms that people will understand, um, talk to me about the, the, the dollars on drilling this year, the meters, um, and if, if you get any sense of the, the costs that you're going to allocate to that or the budget you're going to allocate to that, that'll be useful. You know, I don't have uh, a firm number. I, I think there's a reclamation component of about five and a half million dollars that we need to spend through one of those flow through funds. So we'll be doing that. Over and above that will require uh, us getting the cash flow so we can fund those sort of things. Um, so it, it would be a small program. Right. So, but for now, it's, it's 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 mining revenue generation. That's what you need to do. It's our focus right now, Matt, has been you know just primarily on on the changes that we want to make, right? And um, that's my primary focus. That's why I'm in the seat that I'm in. That's why Maurice is in the seat she's in. We want to utilize the experience, the knowledge that we have from going through this before, and make sure that the asset. Is up and running as it should be. Okay. Well, like, um, I, I think 
that's been useful for me um, to kind of reintroduce myself to the story, you know, having sort of watched from afar what, 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 what was going on, meet the new team. Um, we love a kind of, we certainly love a turnaround story, but obviously this is a bit more of a reset story. Um, mm -hmm. Stay in touch with us. Let us know how these, um, the execution of your plan is going, because I'm, I'm, I'm keen, because as you say, at these prices, I, I feel like I might be getting a bargain if you get if you do your job right. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, and we'll certainly uh, keep you updated, Matt. It's, I'm I'm thankful that you gave me the opportunity to to talk to you today and and get the story out because it is important, and you know we see a bright future here. There's no question about it. I mean, I wouldn't have taken this seat if I didn't believe in the asset. I mean, I. That's, that's an honest statement. It, it, is, it is an honest statement because I think I, I, who would be a mining CEO? Uh, you're putting yourself up uh, on a pedestal to be not to be knocked down at every opportunity. So um, mm. go get them. Uh, hope it goes well for you. Uh, we'll speak to you soon, okay? All right. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it.